Welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today we are inside of a brand new Kickstarter preview series here on the channel for Earth Under Siege Flashpoint. This comes from Dark Horizon Games. It's already landed on Kickstarter. It's already funded well past its goal, and it is now at the pledge manager stage in the later portions of it. So for those interested, the pledge manager link will be in the video description and pinned comment. But this Kickstarter preview series, its aim is to help you make an informed decision as to whether or not this is a game for you from a solo perspective. So inside this series and inside this video to start things off, I'm going to be going through the solo setup to get mission number four set up to the table, which is one of the more meteor missions as things start to really open up in the campaign play. And then after that, we are going to go through that full play and see whether I can survive. Now you may be wondering what Earth Under Siege Flashpoint is all about. Well, the world is in chaos at this point. Alien enemies are assaulting military bases all over the globe, obliterating any resistance before them. They attack indiscriminately and they show no mercy. They call themselves a Zethan, but where they come from is a complete mystery. They are simply not here one moment and then initiating global conquest the next. If they came from space, there are no signs of it. None of the expected indicators of aliens traversing the stars, such as starships in orbit, have been observed yet. Indeed, the Zethian seem to possess no vehicles in their assaults at all. Instead, they rely on short-range portal technology far beyond anything we've ever seen, which allows them to teleport short distances, bypassing many of our defenses. Humankind has never stood so together, united, arm in arm, moving together towards this one mission. We have become Aegis, an allied force drawn from countries all over the earth to stand against the threat. No longer will we stay on the defensive. Now is the time we stand up and show the Zethian that humankind will not fall so easily. Now, at this flashpoint in history, we fight back. Here's a look at the map tiles for mission number four. As you can see, even in the prototype, they're very vibrant in colors. They look very, very cool. Now we're gonna go ahead and start placing all the tokens. Now, all this information around how to set things up in terms of the tiles and the tokens to get going are inside the mission briefing booklet. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those all into place right now. The map tiles now have all the tokens set up as depicted inside the mission briefing. We also have a Devastator token down here. We'll talk about that later on. We're going to continue with setup. Setting up the escalation track is quite easy. Place it down and then grab the threat token. You're going to place it on the threat level that corresponds to the number of operatives in the game. I'll be bringing a total of three operatives into the game, so the threat level set to three. Next, we set up some decks. So we have the Allied and Zethian gear decks and the small mini cards up top. Shuffle both of those decks to make sure they're randomized and you're going to place them within an easy reach. Do the exact same with the basic and elite spawn decks which are green and red respectively and also the blue threat deck. All those are shuffled. Next, make sure you have a spot to place your reserve tokens. In other words, tokens that are heavily used during gameplay, like the surprise and investigate tokens on the right inside the game trays. And on the left-hand side, we have five different focus tokens. Also place the dice within an easy reach. Next, based on the mission briefing, set up the display, as you can see from left to right across the top of the screen there, placing all of the enemies that come with this particular mission in initiative order. The initiative number's up in the top left-hand corner, so in this case, we have one running all the way up to seven on the far right. The next step is to set up the Valor Bag. Pretty simple, take all the Valor tokens and place them inside the black bag. Now we need to set up the operatives for this mission. As you know from earlier, I set the escalation track threat level to three, and that's because I've chosen to bring three operatives in. From the prototype here, we have these four to choose from. We have a sniper, a science officer, a soldier, and an assassin. I've chosen the science officer, the soldier, and the assassin. So that's Olivia, Marissa, and Kyle. Those are the three I'll be bringing in. And one other thing to note is you don't have to play the characters in their full-blown mode. So in other words, I'm going to be controlling Marissa in full to show you exactly how to control an operative with every option available. And that doesn't change when you decide to use an operative in a different mode, which would be the squad member mode, which is a more streamlined way of having an operative in play without you having to do as much admin to control the character. Here's a look at Olivia and Kyle on their squad member side, which you can tell just by looking right after their class of operative, it says squad member. Also, an ability now shows up underneath each of the portraits for those two operatives. So we've got our squad together. Let's now begin to set them up. At this point, each player takes their dashboard, their tactics deck, their miniature, their class gear cards, which you can see here for Marissa, I've already placed in the slots provided. We have a silenced rifle, which is a double-handed weapon. You can see the icon on the 
top left hand corner so it covers over both hand slots and we also have our overwatch token on the grayscale side you'll also see an area here for starting focus tokens and it'll even state exactly which ones you're supposed to get so make sure you get the correct ones there is a difference for operatives that are being controlled in the squad member mode. And as you remember, I chose Kyle and Olivia to be set up as squad members. They will not receive a tactics deck. What they have in difference is this ability right here. And very shortly, we'll go over a token that also contributes to offset the fact they don't have a tactics deck. Here's a look at Olivia's loadout. She has a database uplink pad and she also has a silence pistol. Now the next decision in setup is a big one. And typically you're gonna go ahead and read the description of the mission, the objectives of it to get a great understanding of what you're attempting to do because this step is important. You're going to choose which strategy you're going to come into the mission with, which is going to change some things going into it. So first off, if you choose to breach and clear, you're going to have this ability. It also corresponds with the icon to a deck of gear cards that you get to load out with your characters before going into the mission. So you can choose to breach and clear, you can choose to black off it in, or you can choose espionage. I'm going to go the espionage route, which gives me an ability called hack communications for one order token, once permission, an operative may place the false signal token in any zone, not in line of sight of an enemy. While the token is in the zone, then unaware enemies treat that zone as their target zone. And if an enemy enters the token zone, you remove the token from the game. I've gone ahead and grabbed the token for hack communications. We'll place it on the card here for future use. We also have a support token, which is definitely handy to have out there. If you have any squad members whatsoever, you get this token for support. And it states, if we go ahead and flip this over and exhaust it, then each operative may gain two wild or two cards. Now, if you're talking about an operative you're playing in full, you have either option to choose from. If you're talking about squad members, then you are gonna be pulling from the wild focus tokens because while well, you don't have a tactics deck to draw from but this is one of the things that's used to offset the differences between fully controlling an operative and using its squad member mode now based on our decision to go with the espionage strategy here are the gear cards that relate to it and we get to go ahead and load up our characters with these gear cards as we choose in terms of how I divvied out the gear cards, I gave a tactical armor to Marissa. Also the remote explosives state it comes with three tokens. These are gonna allow me to place one of these tokens in our zone and they have effects obviously that are gonna be extremely useful being that they're remote explosives. Now for Kyle, I've got two new gear cards thanks on our espionage strategy. We have tactical armor and we have a disguise. Now both of these take up the same icon slot. However, in the prototype version, it does not distinguish the fact that the disguise in the newest version, which I currently don't have as I'm using a prototype right now, says it can be worn with other armor. So it is okay to have the disguise and the tactical armor equipped in the same slot in the final version. That will be much more clear on the disguise card. Olivia, our science officer, is going to take tactical armor like the rest of them, as well as a bypass kit and a hollow projector. The next step is to pick an operative to be the on-point operative. In this case, I'm choosing Marissa, and I've got a green token at the very top of our player board to denote this. At this point, every operative that has a tactic stack is going to draw up to their hand size limit, which in this case is five. So here are the five cards that Marissa has drawn up. Again, Kyle and Olivia don't have tactic stacks as squad members. Now we're going to place all of the miniatures in the insertion point on the map. And now we go to the condition deck and we're going to pull one card to put it into play, which is going to resolve a number of effects. Let's find out what our condition effects end up being. We have fortified defenses. Enemies in cover gain additional defense and their armor tokens negate two points of damage instead of one. Now you'll also want to take a look at the mission briefing for the mission you're playing to see if there's any additional setup instructions beyond the norm. In this case, for mission number four, we're supposed to give the operative a devastator token, which is this one right here. It can be moved with a trade action between operatives. Now, as Kyle has the disguise gear card, it makes a lot of sense to bring Kyle in with this particular item. And you will see why when we go over the mission description and the objectives. 
And that, my friends, is everything you need to know to get Earth Under Siege Flashpoint to the table. Again, this is all in prototype form, so it's all subject to change and improvements going into the final version. There are a couple things I want to make mention of and a couple tweaks I want to do. The first one is way up here in this room at the very top, there is normally a data set token in here. This is a token you can go and interact with in order to potentially open up a special op mission, a special side mission that you gain access to if you go after it. Now, now, that token is not inside of the prototype that I currently have, so I can't place it, but that's okay because the actual focus of this mission is going to be to try to complete the objective, which is down here in the bottom left, and we'll talk more about this when we get into the next video, which will begin our play. However, there are a couple things I want to go over right now in terms of some tweaks I want to make to the game state. And that's because we are in essence dropping into mission four of a campaign when normally we would have gone through a number of missions, potentially even some special op missions as well. And our characters and operatives may have actually essentially leveled up or increased their skills in different ways. So they wouldn't just be using the basic weapons that they would have at the very beginning of the game. So some things in terms of the loadouts right now are going to change to match mission number four as if we played every mission all the way up to it. The first one to make mention of that I already went ahead and tweaked before we even drew the cards is for the tactics deck. We actually took out a card and added in some cards that are further progressed along for Marissa in order to boost her up. Here's a look at just some of the cards that came inside of the prototype in order to boost Marissa's deck again as you go through the campaign. The tactics deck is going to evolve over time, allowing you more and more powerful cards as you go along. Also for Marissa, she is going to have an attachment going on to her silenced rifle. And this attachment is going to allow her to use before making an attack with this weapon to gain a red die. Kyle's silenced pistol is going to be replaced with a Zethan blaster. And Olivia is also going to get a Zethan weapon as well. She currently has a silenced pistol called the Viper and it's going to change out for a two-handed weapon called the Phase Rifle. And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the small changes and adjustments to get us ready for mission number four inside the campaign for Earth Under Siege Flashpoint from Dark Horizon Games. Join me in the next episode. We'll go over the mission briefing as well as the objectives to win this mission. We'll talk about loss conditions and we'll go through the flow of the game to give you a great idea as to whether or not this is for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed what you saw and if you're excited for the upcoming playthrough. And as always, keep on rolling solo.